Hi there, everybody, and welcome to today's Art of Procurement. I'm your host, Philip Heidson. So you've just been appointed to a new CPO position. Your executive leadership team is looking at you to make an immediate impact while setting up procurement as a driver of sustainable long-term value. Your first 100 days, they can make or break your career. But where do you start? Well, today is day one of a special five-part series, and it's brought to you in partnership with Officio, the world's largest procurement consultancy firm. This series provides you with the roadmap that you need to hit the ground running. And today, to kick off the series, I spoke with Simon Watson to discuss the importance of repositioning procurement and how to overcome some of the challenges that you'll face in convincing skeptical stakeholders that this time it's different. Simon is a principal at Officio. He manages international teams of consultants and client resources to deliver large-scale procurement transformation projects, many of which are global and in a range of different sectors. And I started the conversation with Simon by asking him, why must a new CPO consider repositioning procurement? I think there's a couple of answers to that. I think the first one has to do with a question that's been around in procurement as long as I've been around in procurement, which is, you know, should CPOs have a position on the board? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's a position that procurement often often wants and desires, but it's not always granted. And I think we have to understand the reasons behind that. And I think one of those is that businesses don't understand the value proposition of procurement. And so, you know, the the logical uh, conclusion from that is that procurement needs to, to reposition itself in the business. But yeah. I think almost more critically than that, there is a danger, in my view, that if procurement doesn't reposition itself and, and and come with a different proposition to the business other than just you know one of administration and and, and ensuring compliance to regulation and, and cost savings, then it may well cease to exist in the future, and, and businesses will find ways, ever more elaborate ways, to just circumvent the entire procurement process and the procurement function. So I think it's it's very important on two levels. Now you get to speak to a lot of uh, folks from outside of procurement, you know, executive level, whether it's CEO, CFO, CIO, COO, all those folks at that uh, that executive table. Do you feel that they're looking at procurement and thinking of it as more of a, well, this could be a self-serve model and perhaps there's some technology that can actually take away procurement? Or do we have a little bit of time left before perhaps uh, it gets to that line of thinking? I think there's potentially a bit of time to go. I mean, I don't think that executives are are looking to to call procurement immediately, but I think as businesses continue to uh, to grow, to, to to want to need to become more efficient, um, to need to continually show value, there's going to be more and more onus on the individual functions to stand up and be counted. And I think it will become quite obvious if procurement doesn't reposition itself mm-hmm. um, from what it is today um, and doesn't start to um, be a, a partner of choice for the business that, yeah, I think I think there's definitely a, the day will come when when executives will will decide actually you know what we, we don't need this anymore yeah and, and when we're talking about repositioning we're thinking about it from a value proposition perspective like really looking to go above and beyond perhaps the things that we do within our businesses today yeah i mean you know the classic with procurement is that you know today i think in a lot of businesses it's it's this type of process policeman yeah. um, this kind of final price negotiator that kind of comes in um, and, and maybe you know, negotiates the last percentage point or two of, of a contract um, and generally runs around the business trying to make sure that people are complying to the, the process, the procurement itself put in place. And I think you know, repositioning in this context means moving to being more of a, a value creator. Now, that mm-hmm. might be generating savings for the business, but it could also be helping the business gain a competitive advantage in, in the market, whether that's through you know, bringing innovation or or other things. Um, you know, there are many ways that procurement function can can add value, but at the moment it struggles to grasp, in many cases, a lot of those. And I think it clearly we, you know, in having this conversation about repositioning, we couldn't ignore the role of technology and digitalization in this, but mm-hmm. um, it's going to be more than just technology that we're talking about in this, in this repositioning. Right. I think, I don't know if you see the same, but for me, a lot of it is about alignment. You know, we, we can't truly hope to um, you know, maximize the impact that we can have on the business and we're not really aligned. And a lot of times we aren't particularly aligned with certainly a lot of our stakeholders. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with that. And I think that comes, you know, partly it's maybe down to stakeholders and, you know, they need to have a bit of an open mind when they're dealing mm-hmm. with procurement. But I think a lot of it, uh, you know, we need to look at ourselves in procurement and think, you know, are we actually 
talking the right language when we speak to the business. Yeah. You know, are we talking in a language that they can understand? And by that, I mean, you know, going away from just talking about savings and process the whole time. You know, do we understand really what the business wants and are we aligning ourselves to those needs? Because again, if we're not, it's it's quite likely that procurement will, will just be bypassed. Yeah. Now you've seen a lot of um, procurement organizations who have gone on this journey. Um, you know, you mentioned one of the challenges there about um, kind of talking the language of the business, which I think is really important. You know, we sometimes get stuck in our own uh, acronyms and, you know, probably overcomplicate a lot of what we do. Uh, but when you see, um, you know, CPOs who have gone on that journey, what are some of the key challenges that they've had to overcome? Yeah, I think, you know, if you look at it, the, probably the, the biggest one is having the, the self-awareness to challenge yourself in procurement mm-hmm. and, and your kind of approach to date and say, well, you know, what part of this is not working and what can I do to, to influence and change that? And I think that's, um, that's probably one of the, the, the most hard, you know, one of the most difficult things to do is, is sort of change from within and change your own mindset. So I think that's definitely one, one big challenge. The other is, uh, obviously, if it's going to do something different in the future and procurement's going to reposition itself, it's going to need different people. And if you look at some of the procurement functions that have been successful on this journey to date, they've gone out and recruited and managed to retain, in many cases, a, a completely different type of talent, which yeah. is, you know, more strategically minded. They're, they're potentially more digitally literate as well. And it's, it's, it's a, almost a world away from the current type of skills profile that you, that you see in procurement. So when you talk about, you know, new procurement talent, what kind of skills are you thinking about? I think there's going to be a definite shift towards softer skills. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting, actually, because we've just done a study on this and about 80% of respondents who were executives in procurement agreed that soft skills would be either essential or very important to procurement talent of the future. And if you drill down a little bit deeper into that, then you get a clue, I think, as to what people are expecting yeah. procurement to be in the future. So. You know, number one skill was the ability to implement and lead. You know, I think that's, that's obviously very important if procurement's going to start shaping the agenda. Then another one was around the skill and capability to challenge conventional thinking. And I think that comes back to what I was saying before. It's as much about challenging procurement and, and ourselves in terms of the way we see things mm-hmm. as it is about the business. And then the other one just to mention was, um, you know, creativity, innovation, problem solving was one that comes up a lot. And you know, that one, it sort of hints at a procurement function in future, which is a bit more project based, more agile, yeah. and not one that just tries to solve every problem with the same sort of solution, whether it's an RFX or some yeah. other procurement process. So when you think about, you know, how CPOs have been successful, you know, what are some of the key activities i guess um that cpos have taken to actually help them achieve that repositioning of procurement i think the first thing that they've done is they've understood how procurement can add value to their business in future Mm -hmm. but then crucially as well how success against that is going to be measured now uh, there's a there's a lot of temptation to think that procurement's only value is around savings generation but so CPOs that have really thought hard about actually in my industry, in my sector here in this company, what is it that procurement can bring to this organization and how is that going to be measured? And how am I going to shout about it? You know, they're the ones that have set themselves a very good, solid foundation to yeah. deliver against that. I think the other thing that companies will need to do is uh, clearly have a vision, but also a roadmap for achieving that vision. And you know, any roadmap at the moment is going to have to include technology and that with the sort of technology that's available, especially in procurement. But the technology can't be considered in isolation. And I think understanding the impact of technology on the people is is going to be crucial. And what I mean by that is if you're bringing in technology to, you know, do a lot of the kind of transaction activity or free up time of your people, you're going to have to make sure that those people have the capability and experience to kind of play that strategic role that you're hoping that technology will allow them Mm -hmm. to play. That technology on its own isn't the silver bullet. That's something we talk about a lot as well, you know, on the show that so many times you, you implement the technology and think it's going to fix everything. Yeah. And you can understand why, I mean, people are drawn to to gadgets, you know, they're, 
they're taken in by the hype and it's very tempting as well to throw money at a problem. It's, it's often mm-hmm. the sort of easiest thing you can do. But, you know, this is a well-trodden path. I think people do realize now that you can't just implement technology without understanding the impact on people. But the fact is it's a lot easier said than done. You know, understanding how people's jobs are going to change, you know, what skills they're going to need in the future, how you're going to help them get those skills, how you're going to motivate them to you know, play that new role. You know, these are all things that, it's, it's actually very difficult to, to just sort of bring together and, and, and affect a change over a matter of, of, of weeks and even months. It can mm-hmm. take a lot longer than that. So you know, whilst I think people know that technology alone can't be the solution, I think you know, the examples of where companies have truly been successful on that journey are quite few and far between. So when we're talking about um, repositioning of procurement, you know, one of the things that comes to mind is the marketing, the branding, the positioning, if you will, from a almost from a sales perspective of what procurement can do and, and painting the picture of the art of the possible within the organization. I wonder if you could just um, speak to whether that's something that you see a lot of successful procurement teams doing or whether it, it doesn't really matter how you brand it as, as long as you're doing a job that the rest of the business wants you to do for them. Yeah, I mean, clearly the latter there is, is, is the most important thing. And you know, if you're doing a job that you know, the rest of the business wants, it will ultimately generate pull for its yeah. services. But you can definitely make your life easier, in my view, by branding procurement uh, differently. And I think, you know, if, I, if you look at some procurement functions that don't just brand themselves as administrative functions, as, you know, uh, ensuring compliance to regulation, uh, generating savings, they actually brand themselves as for example, providing you know, insight and foresight to the business or um, you know, delivering a competitive advantage. And you know, we've got to be honest, in procurement, we do have a bit of an image problem. It's mm-hmm. not traditionally seen as the most sexy function to go and work. But there's no reason why it shouldn't be. If you think about procurement, it's essentially sitting between the supply chain and the business at this critical juncture. It touches pretty much every other function in the business, whether it's finance, you know, whether it's operations, um, you know, other other functions too. And so it's definitely um, got the opportunity to, to brand itself much differently than it does today. And I think by doing that, it will speed up the transition to, mm. to this new elevated position that it, that it should seek. Yeah, the important thing then is then delivering on the promise, you know, making a new promise to the business and then being able to deliver on it. Um, and that is really, I mean, I found that yeah. so important in helping drive the change um, the change management of any repositioning. Yeah, absolutely. It's like anything else. Great branding gets you time to prove yourself, essentially. Yeah. And I think once you've done that, then you know, the, the next best thing you can do, I think, is have a have a roadmap and, and a journey that includes you know, quick wins to kind of build momentum and, and keep people believing. I think trying to sort of aim towards a, um, a big splash change, some time down the future is not the way to go. I think those organizations that try for, you know, plan kind of milestones along the way and they work in quite an agile way towards their vision, you know, those are the ones that I think will be most successful. Hi there. I want to thank you for listening into today's podcast as part of our series that helps you take the actions that you need in your first 100 days to position procurement for long-term success. If you'd like to get more insight into how to approach your first 100 days, or to reference all the tips that are covered in this series, Officio has created a handy downloadable checklist. It's really easy to grab your copy of this checklist. All you need to do is go to artofprocurement.com slash 100 days. That's artofprocurement.com slash 100 days.